so in this video, what we're going to do is have a look at the field readings of a live device. So if I go to my device manager, you'll see that I am already online with the real device uh, down here. This is the one that we've been using for demonstration. Um, and on this one, what we can do is go to the field readings for the live device. And you'll see we've got system status and a bunch of logs, the counters and the com status. Now for this video, what we're going to cover is what's going on in system status. So this is a live feed that updates roughly every five seconds about the um, existing status of the device. So if you're in the field and you have connected and gone online with the field device, then you can use this to understand what is going on inside that controller. Now, you can connect through the direct link with the USB. Um, on the RC15 model, you might be able to use the Wi-Fi feature as well. So that's really useful for safety if you are in bad weather and you need to deal with an emergency connection. Um, or be able to interrogate the device so you can you can remain in your vehicle and you don't have to get ladders out or climb poles in a storm or what have you. So it's a lot easier that way. Anyway, whichever way that you get online, what you do is you go to field readings, you go to system status, and it gives you the core information. Right? So this is the system. So I haven't set the time and date on here, but um, that is where that is, and it will tell you what the switchgear configuration is. It'll tell you if it's acting as a recloser, a sectionalizer, a low brake switch, um, and also the breaker position, which is very important there to know, and your control mode as well. So you'll also see all of the binary controls for the functionality. So your protection on or off, and then all the rest of the protection features that live off the back of that. Um, a UPS status, your simple network time protocol status, and if you have the RC15, uh, the GPS status. And that's useful as well. Over here we have the measurements. So the measurements panel shows you exactly what the readings are across all of the phases. So here we've got 10 amps on phase A, 12 amps on phase B, 11 amps on phase C. So you've got some neutral current there, obviously, because it's a little bit of an imbalance, and a little bit of negative phase sequence there also. So it's useful to be able to see that. Um, also the voltages, so on a phase to ground measurement individually or from a phase to phase between all the two different ones and also your frequency. Uh, power information is over here and your power factor. So um, this is quite useful to be able to find out um, whether you've got your directional stuff right as well because you can check your power flow direction just over here. Um, if you don't have directional earth fault, negative phase sequence, or sensitive earth fault features enabled, you won't get a direction for those. You need to turn that protection feature on in order to see it. But the overcurrent one is a really useful one because that's just the current flow under system normal as well. It doesn't mean there's an overcurrent happening, it just means that we're using the positive sequence voltage and current to determine which uh, power flow direction um, is occurring at the time. And then of course you've got your energy which is a signed value so we can work out whether we're delivering um, energy and this slowly ticks up hopefully if the lights are on um, and yes you'll be able to see what you're delivering there in kilowatt hours, kvars and um, your apparent uh, energy there too. SCADA stuff, now this is a bit esoteric, um, but it has to do with the secure authentication features if you're using it, and also your 61850 features if you're using that in the controller. Um, identification is quite useful because this will be able to give you the information about what the serial number of the relay is, but also of the other components that are inside this device. Now I'm using one of our demo boxes as a connection, so there is no IO or SIM module associated with this device, but the ones that you deal with in the field are very likely to have at least a SIM. I should certainly hope they have one of those, um, but you might have IO modules as well. So it's good to be able to know what all those records are. IO and logic status, of course, if you're using IO and logic features, this stuff's really important to be able to see uh, because if you have logic statuses or things that are controlling the device beyond just the normal protection and control, then you can evaluate what all of that is and what the status of those different channels are here. Um, if you're using an auto changeover scheme function, then that data lives inside this system status component. And then lastly, you've got your power quality status. Now, power quality, I'm going to cover in a different video because there's a lot of information around this. And we actually have a separate software package for handling all your power quality information. 
typically it's a different group within the organization that has a look at that, um, particularly in the, in the larger utility users. But what this does is gives you an overall view about what the state is. So a particular interest, um, particularly on modern networks, is to have a look at the voltage THD because with more and more inverters showing up in the network, um, we have seen some cases where there have been faulty inverters and um, particularly connected at medium voltage, and then you might have harmonic distortion issues. So this is a really good black, uh, place to start an investigation because, of course, any of the requests that you have in the field can just simply read this without needing to add additional equipment. So very useful thing there to be able to do it. If you've configured your interruption monitoring and you want to track your system's performance indices, then you can use this system to be able to do that here. Um, we do have a comprehensive logging system that lives in the power quality software. But this is sort of a top level stuff, so you have to quickly have a look. And the same goes for SAGs and swells. Now, on the left hand side, you'll see that there is a history. So, what happens is every time that you go online with a device, it takes a snapshot out of what that state was. So, if you ask for service from us and you send us a CMS device file, then yes, we'll be able to see what the state of play was when the device was last in service, which really helps with the fault finding if there's any issues. That's the system status. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel and you'll stay up to date with all the developments in Noja Power CMS. Thank you.